so it's Trans Day Visibility again. Are your eyes open? Song, 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 mm, song, sounds, ASMR, do, 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 do. So, hey, everybody. It is Trans Day of Visibility again. Yay! I thought about dropping confetti, but, um, I don't want to clean it up, so. Anyway, um, Today is the culmination of a week of um, celebrating the trans community internationally. Obviously, a good part of that is acknowledging some of the struggles and discrimination that we go through, but overall, it's actually more of a time to celebrate the transgender community and acknowledge and highlight a lot of our accomplishments. And I'm sure there's a lot of people who um, question what the need for this is. I mean, you trans people had Laverne Cox on Time Magazine years ago. We've already gone past the tipping point. What else do we need to do? Well, let me tell you. There's a lot more than just the success of celebrity. I get it. This is coming from a girl who's trying to build a following on YouTube. But stick with me. Yes, there is greater representation in media. And yes, there have also been legislative accomplishments. As I've talked about in past videos, New Jersey just made it a lot easier for transgender people to change their birth certificate. And trust me, when that happened, I was one of the first ones in line. And every day, there does seem to be minor victories in different states and different locations. Nevertheless, there continues to be discrimination all over the world. In some countries, it is becoming increasingly dangerous to be any one of the letters in the alphabet soup. There are tons of laws on the books and going into effect now that criminalize people for their sexual identity or their gender identity. Even here in the US, we're still dealing with different states trying to pass bathroom bills. Because despite the fact that there's no evidence of trans people attacking women or children in restrooms, and conversely, while there are many, many instances of trans people actually being the victims of violence when they're in the bathroom, some people just can't wrap their heads around the fact that people just want to pee. And here in America, you've got nonsense like this. The administration's policy bars people who have undergone gender transition from enlisting in the military. Those already in the ranks must serve in their original biological gender. Because of people's extremist views, policy is being put in place to solve a problem which doesn't exist. It's quite frankly just ridiculous. And there is just rampant legal discrimination all over the place. Fortunately, there are allies that are fighting back. One of the biggest things happening here in the U.S. is that the Equality Act has been reintroduced in Congress. Now, we'll see what actually happens. I have no doubt that it can pass in the House, the Senate, maybe, and then, you know, we have to deal with the Orange Cheeto. And I suppose really the goal is to get society to a point where when a transgender person walks out their front door, they don't have to worry about being discriminated against, being attacked, and that there doesn't have to be a worry that if they themselves are victimized, they won't be protected. Because, and I'll say this again for the people in the back row, trans people are just people. It shouldn't matter what somebody's sexual or gender identity is. Almost 20 years in, into a new century, we need to get past these nonsensical, bigoted views. And really, I bring all this up as context, because as I was actually acknowledging to my wife last night, uh, I don't want my channel to be kind of a downer because ultimately I see a lot of hope. And when I see things happening like the Equality Act, it occurs to me that we've gotten to a point where although things aren't where they should be, the needle is moving in the right direction. And for me, that's what Transgender Day of Visibility is about. The way that you get to acceptance is through experience. Now, I wouldn't dare to suggest that the LGB part of LGBT has gotten to a point where people's sexual identity is not necessarily a factor when it comes to the risk of being discriminated against. It most certainly is. However, there is a very clear 
shift that you can track. Looking at the calendar for this June, I'm reminded that we're coming up on the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. And when you think back, 50 years is not a long time whatsoever. I mean, I was born in 1984, Stonewall was only 15 years before that. But back then, the reason that those riots happened was because at the time, just being gay in New York City was a criminal act. And sometimes I think that we forget how broadly homosexuality was stigmatized even through the 90s and early 2000s. But part of the way that you get past that is by representation. Everybody talks about Ellen coming out as being some watershed moment that just changed people's views overnight. This is, this is so hard, but I, 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 I think I've realized that I am, I can't even say the word. Why can't I say the word? I mean, why can't I just say, I mean, what is wrong? That why, why do I have to be so ashamed? I mean, why can't I just say the truth? I mean, be who I am. I'm 35 years old. I'm so afraid to tell people. I mean, I just, Susan, I'm gay. And really, that's not the case. Because after coming out, Ellen's show was soon after canceled. And she spent several years kind of in the wilderness, not really getting much work. But at the same time, that was in 1997. In 1998, Will and Grace came out. Now obviously, there are elements of that show yeah, that in hindsight are kind of problematic. And a lot of depictions afterwards were kind of campy, oftentimes played for laughs. You know, the flamboyant gay best friend. Can you think of anything worse? Stonewashed jeans with a matching jacket. But it did do something in so much that, while we're nowhere near full acceptance, by and large, if somebody is gay, a lot of people just don't care. And what I'm starting to see is greater representation. There are way more people in the spotlight who exist outside the traditional gender binary. And it's funny to remember that a few years ago, when Caitlyn Jenner came out, who again, by no means, is a transgender hero, a common theme that I kept hearing, at least from people that I interacted with, was, oh my god, who cares about that? Why does that have to keep coming up? Why are people interviewing her? It's just stupid. Well, obviously, when one of the biggest male sports role models says, hey, I'm actually a chick, that's going to be newsworthy. More and more people started paying attention. And pretty soon after that, you started seeing a lot more representation on TV, in music, on film, and places like YouTube. So when I see things like the Equality Act starting to move through Congress, I am very aware of the fact that that is the kind of legislation that a few years ago would have absolutely no chance of passing whatsoever. And I chalk that up to visibility. When you have good representation in media, it gives everyday people the sense that perhaps they might be safe being authentic themselves. And those who take issue with the number of transgender people who are just suddenly coming out of the woodwork fail to grasp the fact that part of that is a comfort level that now exists in the public. As I pointed out in a recent video, I had a pretty good sense of what was going on with my gender identity a long time ago. But back in the early 2000s, the representation that I had in my head was very negative. And while I'm sure that fed my own internalized transphobia, I know for a fact that moreover, I was worried about how the rest of the world would receive me. And that's a common theme you hear repeated over and over again. When a broader spectrum of gender and sexual identities are seen as more common, people who have those identities are more inclined to just be honest with the world about themselves. And that, I think, is where the real shift is. Back in the 90s, a lot of people said, I don't know any gay people. But as people who were gay felt more comfortable letting their families and friends know, it suddenly seemed like it was more common. And today, the same thing appears to be happening with the trans community. And I know that after I came out, I know that I've had several friends and family say to me that 
I'm the first trans person that they personally know. And that just by me existing, it kind of redefined their understanding of what this all was about. And really, truth be told, you genuinely have no idea who actually is trans. You have no idea who might be gay, who might fall somewhere outside of your expectations. I know personally, when I first started coming out to people, I sent a message to one of my best friends and said, hey, this is what's going on with me. I'm trans. I hope that everything is okay and you'll be understanding about that. And their response pretty much was, yeah, okay, that's fine. I don't have any questions. I'm gender fluid myself. Now, I've known this person for uh, 20 years and had absolutely no idea. I was worried about how they were going to receive me. And meanwhile, they had been having the same concerns. So, really, Transgender Day of Visibility isn't necessarily about activism. I mean, it is. But really, for me, it's more of an opportunity to celebrate the everyday person who gets to be themselves. And a common theme that I've seen lately with some trans YouTubers who have a decent platform is them getting to a point of going, hey, you know, I'm burnt out with activism. I talk about LGBT things a lot because I want to. Um, but I think I'm going to talk less about them just because, like, I kind of ran out of things to talk. Not really. There's actually a lot more you could talk about. I'm going to, like, I only want to make LGBT content when I'm inspired by it, which could be a lot. Being a marginalized person does not immediately make you an activist. And just because you share your experience does not mean you have to take on the fight at the front line. And coming to the realization that they can do a world of good by not necessarily being educators and activists, but by just being themselves. And the mere act of existing as a transgender person who's visible to the public, well, that's just a revolutionary thing. Not everybody needs to be a warrior for the cause of justice. People just need to be people. And when other people see that and begin to wrap their heads around the fact that being trans is commonplace and mundane, more and more so, that's what it will be. So, what are you doing this Transgender Day of Visibility? Are you going to some event? Is there a march you're attending? Will you publish a rambling YouTube video like some of your favorite people? For me, obviously, I'm doing that last one. But beyond that, I'm just gonna stay at home and hang out with my family. You know, like normal people do. So yeah, that's it. Do the normal things. Like, share, subscribe, leave some comments down below. I'd love to hear from you and hear what you've got going on. So happy Transgender Day of Visibility. I hope it's a good one for you. And, uh... I'll see you around.